friends, Pastor Kyla here. I'm so glad to see you again today. We've got a really cool story to, t to look at today as we're leading into Easter. Now, I'm not sure if you will have received it or not, but I did send you a package of Easter face cards in the mail. And so hopefully those have gotten to you. If not, no panic, they're on their way. They've uh, been, they were mailed early in the week, so hopefully they're on their way to you. Uh, we're gonna need those today as we tell our story. I always like it when we bring a Bible close by, right? And uh, we're gonna need our worship at home box. What we're really gonna need is the candle and the cross. And I'll wait here while you go round up those things. And I'm looking forward to sharing our story time with you today. Awesome. Well, I like to begin always by bringing the cross close because the cross reminds us that Jesus made a way for us to come close to God. God came close to us so we can come close to him. So I like to put the cross right there because uh, it reminds us that Jesus is close with us. And then I also like to bring out our candle and I'm going to turn it on. You can turn on yours too. And we can say we light this candle to remind us that Jesus is the light of the world and he's with us always. I'm going to put that right in the middle there. And this would be a good time for us to sing our candle lighting song. Jesus is the light. He's the light of the world. Jesus is the light. He's the light of the world. Jesus is the light. He's the light of the world. And he's ever shining in my soul. Amen. Yeah, I love that song. Well, I am really hungry right now. How about you? I'm trying to think. I haven't eaten for quite a while, and so my tummy's starting to rumble. And you know what else? I'm kind of thirsty, too. Hmm. It reminds me of a story that happens in the lead up to Easter, and it's part of Jesus' story, and it's part of the story we're going to tell today. Now, when you're really hungry or really thirsty, what do you always want to eat? What's your favorite food? Isn't it interesting? There's so many delicious foods. I have a hard time choosing one, but today I really feel like a hamburger. Uh, oh, I would love a hamburger and I would love to have a big glass of cold ice water with it. That would sound delicious to me. I'm interested in what you're hoping is your next meal. Oh, I love food. It's so nice to have it. Well, there was a time in Jesus' story where he didn't have very much food or any at all, and he didn't have very much water or any at all for a very long time. I like to eat three or four times a day, and when Jesus spent some time in the desert, there was no food or water for 40 days. That's a really long time. So we're gonna hear this story and again, if you have your story face card, your Easter face cards with you, we're going to use the first four of those, but I'm going to use my bigger ones while I share this story with you. Here are some faces. We usually think of these faces as part of the Christmas story. But these faces are part of the Easter story, too. Hmm. In the beginning of our story, there was a baby. Do you see the baby? He's reaching out like he's trying to give you a great big hug. God chose Mary to be the mother of God. Did you hear that? God chose Mary to be the mother of God. The Word was born into the world, a wordless child. When the baby looked up into Mary's face, he could already see the cross there. And when the baby looked up into his earthly father, Joseph's face, could see the cross there too. Mary and Joseph kept the baby close. They gave him everything he needed and helped him grow. And he did. 
he began to grow. There are many faces on this card. Some young faces and some much older faces. This baby was beginning to grow. This is Jesus. Jesus was growing into a boy. He was 12 years old when his family went into the holy town of Jerusalem for their special high holy days. They spent time there together, and then the family returned back toward Nazareth with the group, and they were on the road heading back home before they realized they couldn't find Jesus anywhere. Where was he? So they ran back and looked everywhere they could in Jerusalem. They looked to the streets, they looked behind people's houses, they talked to people and asked if they'd seen their son. Finally, they went to the temple, which was a place people shared about the stories of God. And there they found Jesus in the middle of this group of older teaching men. And Jesus was learning from them, but Jesus was teaching them too. And he was saying things that these men had never heard anyone else say before. When Mary and Joseph found Jesus there, they said, why did you do this? Why didn't you return with us? And Jesus simply said, I thought you'd know that I would be in my father's house. Now this confused Mary and Joseph because Joseph's house was way back in Nazareth. But even though they were confused, they never forgot. Oh, this is an interesting card. I see two faces on here. became a man. When he was about 30 years old, he went to the River Jordan and he asked his cousin John to baptize him. Can you see John? John was a bit of a wild man. And when Jesus came into the water and faced John and asked him to baptize him, John was very reluctant. He said, but I know who you are. You're the Messiah. You should baptize me. But Jesus said, it is written that John was to prepare the way and to come first. Baptize me, Jesus said. So John baptized Jesus. Jesus went down into the chaotic and dark water. And when he came back up into the light, there were people who were watching and they said they saw the heavens open up and a dove come close to be with Jesus. And those same people said they heard a voice and the voice said, this is my son whom I love, with whom I am well pleased. Hmm. After this, Jesus continued across the River Jordan and went into the desert to learn more about who he was and what his work would be. Hmm. Do you think you might have a guess whose face this is. Well, Jesus went into that desert. A desert is a place that's always changing. The only thing that stays the same is it's never the same. Jesus moved into the desert to discover more about who he was and what his work was to be. And one day, after spending some time with no food, and with nothing to drink. 
Jesus heard a voice. And the voice said to Jesus, look at some of the stones on the ground. Wouldn't it be a good idea if you turned some of those stones into bread? Hmm. If you were really hungry, do you think you'd want some bread? Hmm. But Jesus said, no, we need more than bread to be our food. Well, a little while longer, that same voice met Jesus, and it seemed as though Jesus was at the top of the temple. And the voice said, if you really are the Son of God, I bet you could just jump, and God would send his angels down to catch you. But Jesus said, no, we never need to test God. And all of a sudden, it seemed as though Jesus were up really high where he could see all the kingdoms of the whole world. And that same voice came to Jesus and said, if you follow me, I'll make you king over all the kingdoms you can see. And Jesus said, finally, no, I am a king. I know I am to be a king but that's not the kind of king I am. The voice went away. Jesus went back across the Jordan and began to do the work he was to do. I wonder, I wonder what that work was. We are seeing quite a number of faces in our story leading to Easter. I wonder how our story will end. I'm grateful for all these faces. I'm grateful for the story. And I'm grateful for the reminders today of the way to Easter. Join me in giving thanks. Praise to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. Amen. Thanks for joining me, friends. I wonder who you could share this story with. I'm going to head off now and have something yummy to eat. Maybe you will too. See you next week.